Hi, everyone. How are you today? I'm going to share with you some of my notes or summary from the chapter one of the psychology textbook that I have been reading. Let me share with you my screen. Chapter one, the nature of psychology. Psychology is the scientific study of the mind and behavior. Think critically. Critical thinking means understanding the world around without just merely receiving the information. It's important to reflect what the information means, how it fits in with your experience and its implications for your life and society. Checking the validity of the information. For example, when someone tells us a new fact, you should ask yourself, what do you ask me to believe? How do you know that? Are there other possible explanations? What is the most reasonable conclusion? Why should you believe what you are told and what you read? The reason has its root in psychology. What gives people authority? Why is their knowledge better than yours? Since you can't study everything from scratch, you can start from the position of knowledge in the first place, which means trusting others' knowledge, but you still need to have a critical questioning approach. Evaluating evidence and making a judgment of truth is a very important component in daily life. False news. Whatever the reason for the news stories, we must be careful to think carefully about them. Why should you believe them? What are the sources? Are they reputable? Social Constructivism. Social construct is a collection of characteristics and traits that are often presented in society that the origins are lost in time and never questioned. There are some other definitions of social constructivism from the internet. For example, a social construct is a concept that exists not in objective reality, but as a result in human interaction. It exists because humans agree that it exists. Social construct theory says that humans create constructs in order to make sense of the objective world. One way humans create social constructs is by structuring what they see and experience into categories. For example, they see people with different skin colors and other physical features and create the social construct of a race. Or they see tall plants with very thick stalks that branch out at a top and have leaves growing on them and create the construct of a tree. Those two examples help illustrate how humans use social constructs and how different some social constructs are from other social constructs. A social construct can include values and beliefs that humans have about the, so about the construct. Humans can alter the construct as they continue to interact with the world. Attitudes toward these of different skin colors have changed over the last 100 years, and they continue to change. The construct of race still exists, but what the construct means has changed. Gender as a social construct. A little more than 50 years ago, people believed that men and women had specific gender-related roles determined by biology. Women are more nurturing, so they were best suited to be mothers who stayed at home to raise children. Men are more aggressive and less nurturing, 
best suited to go out to work and provide for the family. We don't believe that anymore about men and women. There are some changes now. Social constructionists share four beliefs and practices in common. I'm just going to read out the points. A critical stance toward knowledge that is normally taken for granted. Knowledge exists in a historical and cultural context. Knowledge is sustained by a social process. Knowledge and social action go together. Gender is a social construct. Gender can be determined by social attitudes. How it is recognized may vary between countries. <clears throat> Sex is a biological contrast. construct. Social construct changes when the attitudes in the society changes. Psychology as a basic and applied science. Science has two types of research. Basic research that reflects the knowledge purely for its own sake to examine how and why people behave, think, and feel the way they do. Basic research is done in a laboratory or real-world settings with human participants or other species. Applied research, designed to solve specific practical problems, use basic scientific knowledge to design, implement, and assess intervention programs. Classic studies, Robert's, Robert's Cave and the Jigsaw Classroom. Robert's Cave, Muzar Sharif, Sharif, a Turkish psychologist and his colleagues, conducted a basic research on factors that increase and reduce intergroup hostility. Researchers divided 11-year-old boys to two groups, the eagles and rattles, at a summer camp in Roberts Cave, Oklahoma, to test that hypothesis that competition would breed intergroup hostility, the researchers began to pit both groups against one another in athletic and other contests. Result: hostility soon was developed between the groups. I miss an eye there. Next. Researchers examined if conflicts could be reduced by having both groups share enjoyable activities together, for example, watching movies together. The result was that these activities breed more fighting. Hmm. Next, research. Okay, let's go to the next. Researchers wanted to test a final hypothesis that an intergroup conflict can be reduced by having both groups do an activity to cooperate to achieve a common goal. They did an experiment, a heavy lorry bringing food for the boys who was stalled, forcing both groups to cooperate to tow it with a rope. The result was that this and other cooperative experiences gradually reduced the hostility between the group. Summary. Hostility can be bred from competitions and reduced by having an activity to collaborate to achieve a common goal. Jigsaw Classroom. Psychologists developed evaluated a classroom procedure called the Jigsaw Program. Motivation, desegregation of schools in the area. Students are divided in some multi-ethnic groups of five to six children preparing for an upcoming test on, for example, the life of Abraham Lincoln. Each child is given a piece of the total knowledge to be learned for example, one child has the information about Lincoln's childhood, another child about his political career, etc. To pass the test, group members must fit their knowledge pieces together as if working on a jigsaw puzzle. Each child 
must teach the others his or her own piece of knowledge. Result, children's liking for one another increases, prejudice decreases, and self-esteem and school of achievement improve. The goals of psychology to describe how people and other species behave, to understand the cause of these behaviors, to predict how people and animals will behave under certain conditions, to influence behavior through the control of its causes, to apply psychological knowledge in ways that enhance human welfare. Psychology's broad scope, a levels of analysis framework. Behavior and its causes can be examined by biological level, psychological level, and environmental level. Biological level is about brain processes and genetic influences. Psychological level is about thoughts, feelings, and motives. Environmental level is about past and current and social environments we are exposed to. Example, voodoo, death by magic curses. In the psychological level, perhaps the victim believed that he was doomed. Environmental level, the belief was supported by the family friends, enemies, and culture. Biological level, the victim's beliefs sent stress signals to the body, sending the victim into physiological shock. And then perhaps that person had a health problem and then died. Mind, body, and nature nurture interactions. Cannon's hypothesis is the alternative of supernatural explanations. Negative thoughts on a stressful situation can trigger secretion of stress hormones. This is consistent with the mind and body interactions. The relations between the mental processes in the brain and the functioning functioning of other bodily systems. GAD, Generalized Anxiety Disorder. There are examples of patients who have GAD, but not cardiovascular problems, who experience negative cardiovascular events. This means there is a relation between anxiety and heart-related problems. Is our behavior primarily influenced by our nature, biological endowment, or by nurture, our environment and learning history? Research shows that both nature and nurture affect our behavior. Nature and nurture interact, just as our biological capacities affect how we behave and experience our world, our experiences affect our biological capacities. Nature, nurture, and psychological factors must be considered to understand human behaviors. Perspectives on behavior. Psychology's roots, mind-body dualism, monism, and empirism. Mind-body dualism is the belief that mind is a spiritual entity not subject to physical laws that govern the body. Monism. Mind and body are one. The mind is not a separate spiritual entity. 
empirism, empiricism. All ideas and knowledge are gained empirically through the senses. Early schools, structuralism and functionalism. Structuralism, the analysis of the mind in terms of its basic elements. For example, banana is smooth, yellow, and curved. To break the structure down into its most simple elements, we can begin to look at the structure differently. Human perspectives, structuralists use the method of introspection. Looking within to study sensations, the basic elements of consciousness. What made them have that emotion, feeling, or thought? They exposed participants to all sorts of stimuli, light, sounds, and tastes, and trained them to describe their inner experiences. This method of studying was criticized and died out after a few decades. The study of cognitive processes. Functionalism is about that study. Uh, psychology should study the functions of consciousness rather than the structures. For example, arms and hands. Structuralists would say or would explain the movements by studying how muscles, bones, and tendons operate, while functionalists think about why do we have arms and hands? How do they help us to adjust in the environment? It's the functions of the body parts. The psychodynamic perspectives. Searches for the causes of behavior within the inner working of our personality, our unique pattern of traits, emotions, and motives. Psychoanalysis, Freud's great challenge. Psychoanalysis is the analysis of internal and primarily unconscious psychological forces. Freud's patience. No disease or bodily malfunction could explain the condition of phobias. The cause must be psychological. His patients were not producing their symptoms consciously. The cause must be hidden from awareness. That was what he thought. Defense mechanism is a psychological technique quest that help us cope with anxiety and the pain of traumatic experience. Repression, a primary defense mechanism, protects us by keeping unacceptable impulses, feelings, and memories in the unconscious depth of the mind. Modern psychodynamic theory, Focus more on early family relationships, other social factors, and our sense of self that shape our personality. Psychodynamic object relations theories focus on how early experienced with caregivers Sorry, I made some typo errors here. Psychodynamic object relations theories about is about focus on how early experienced with caregivers shape the views that people form of themselves and others. In turn, these views unconsciously influence a person's relationship with other people throughout life. For example, a person's shyness, according to Freud's theory or a psychodynamic theory, to explain a person's extreme shyness around the opposite sex, for instance, Freud might have explored whether the person is unconsciously afraid of their sexual impulses and therefore avoids putting themselves into dating situations 
where they would have to confront those hidden impulses. We continue to the behavioral perspective. The behavioral perspective, the power of environment. The behavioral perspective focuses on the role of the external environment in determining our actions. Our behavior is determined by habits learned from previous life experience and by stimuli in our immediate environment. Origins from the philosophical school of empiricism. All ideas and knowledge are gained through senses. John Locke, early empiricist, states that at birth, human brain is a tabula rasa or a blank tablet in which experiences are written. Human nature is therefore shaped by environment. Behaviorism, school of thought that emphasizes environmental control of behavior through learning. For example, how do we see a person's shyness? Perhaps by examining their past experiences and whether the experiences with uh, asking people out on dates were not good or poor. Such punishments decrease the likelihood of a positive outcome and so the person may retreat from such dating behavior. So it's about the behavior, past experience. How about cognitive behaviorism? Cognitive behaviorism is about learning experience and the environment that influence our expectations and other thoughts, and in turn, our thoughts influence our behavior. A person's shyness. I'll just see it from the textbook here. Okay. A cognitive behaviorist might say that past dating rejections are punishing and lead the person to expect that further attempts at romance would be doomed. In turn, these expectations of social rejections inhibited them from asking people out and even from making friends. How do we solve this? Discussions with friends and family may help the person to think about their situation in a new site, in a new light, enabling them to modify their behavior, become more outgoing, and improve their social relationships. Humanistic perspective, self-actualization, and positive psychology. Humanistic perspective or humanism emphasizes free will, personal growth, and the attempt to find meaning in one's existence. It emphasizes the importance of personal choice and responsibility, personality growth, and positive feeling of self worth. The meaning of our existence lies in our own hands. I quite like this theory. How do we explain about a person's shyness? Even though a person is shy, then that person is responsible to take his or her own action. The cognitive perspective, the thinking human. Cogitare in Latin means to think. Cognitive perspective examines the nature of the mind and how mental processes influence behavior. Gestalt psychology. Gestalt means pattern in German. Examines how elements of experience are organized into wholes. Gestalt is whole or organizations. Gestalt psychology stimulated interest in cognitive topics 
for example, perceptions and problem solving. Oh, actually, Gestalt means whole or organization. Renewed interest in the mind. <clears throat> Language and thoughts are closely liked. Language and thoughts are closely linked. The environment children grow up in and the social and cultural factors they are exposed impact their development. Psychologists' interest in mental processes swelled by the 1960s and 1970s, a period called as the Cognitive Revolution. The modern cognitive perspective. There are three things here. Cognitive psychology. Focus on the study of mental processes embodies the cognitive perspective. Cognitive psychologists study the processes and how people reason and make decisions, solve problems, from per form perceptions and mental images, and produce and understand language. Cognitive neuroscience. Use sophisticated electrical recording and brain imaging techniques to examine brain activity while people engage in cognitive tasks. Cognitive neuroscientists determine how the brain learns language, acquire knowledge for memories, and perform other cognitive activities. Social constructivism. What we consider reality is largely our own mental creation from a shared way of thinking among members of social groups. Constructivists would think that the long-standing conflict between Israeli Jews and Palestinian Arabs show differences on, on how they interpret the history of the land where they live. How do we explain about the Persian shyness in the social constructivism theories or in the cognitive perspectives? Let's see the textbook here. From a cognitive perspective, we might examine someone's shyness in terms on how they pay attention to and process information, their perceptions, and their memory. A person's interpretation of their past dating experience, uh, past dating failures may also be based on faulty reasoning. The shy person may believe that their rejections are because of their personal qualities. I'm not att attractive or interesting enough. And therefore expects their future dating attempts will also be unsuccessful. If the person correctly attributed the rejections to some temporary or situational factors, for example, sure he was really interested in someone else, then they would not necessarily expect other people to reject them in the future. A cognitive psychologist also might ask whether the person's memories of their past dating experiences are accurate or have become distorted over time. It is possible that the person may be remembering those events as much as more unpleasant than they actually were. The social cultural perspective. The embedded human. The social cultural perspective examines how the social environment and cultural learning influence our behavior, thoughts, and feelings. Socialization is the process by which culture is transmitted to new members and internalized by them. Behavior genetics, the study of how behavioral tendencies are influenced 
by genetic factors. Cross-cultural psychology explores how culture is transmitted to its members and examines psychological similarities and differences among people from diverse cultures. For example, individualism here. Individualistic points of view emphasizes on personal goals and self-identity. Collectivities emphasizes on group goals better or more than individual goals. Personal identity is defined by the tie that binds one to the extended family or other social groups. For example, of a person's shy behavior. Perhaps that person is affected by cultural upbringing and other social factors. Cultural norms of assertiveness for males put pressure on men, on men to behave on a certain way. So culture really affects people. Let's move on to the biological perspective, the brain, genes, and evolution. Biological perspective examines how brain processes and other bodily functions regulate behavior. Behavioral neuroscience examines how brain processes and other physiological functions that underlie our behavior, sensory experiences, emotions, and thoughts. Natural selection. If an inherited trait gives certain members an advantage over others, these members will be more likely to survive and pass the characteristics on to their offspring. This way, species evolve as the adaptive as the adaptive traits with the population over generations. As the environment changes, the adaptiveness of traits may increase or decrease. Through natural selection, the biology of species evolve in response to the environmental conditions. Evolutionary psychology, a growing discipline that explains how evolution shapes modern human behavior. As our human-like ancestors developed new physical abilities like the ability to walk upright, thus freeing the use of arms and hands, they began to use tools and weapons and to hunt and live in social groups. Certain psychological abilities like memory, thought, language, the capacity to learn and solve problems became more important to survival as our ancestors adapted to new ways of living. Using levels of analysis to integrate the perspectives. Biological level of analysis. Analyze behavior and its causes in terms of brain functioning and hormones. Psychological level of analysis. Look at the cognitive perspective and analyze how thought, memory, and planning influence behavior. Psychodynamic and humanistic perspectives. Examine how certain motives and personality traits influence behavior. Environmental level of analysis, behavioral and sociocultural perspectives. Examine how stimuli in the physical and social environment shape our behavior, thoughts, and feelings. Here is a screenshot from the textbook 
about the comparison of six major perspectives on human behavior. They are psychodynamic, behavioral, humanistic, cognitive, sociocultural, and biological perspectives. For example, in psychodynamic, the conception of human nature, the human as controlled by inner forces and conflicts. Behavioral, the human as reactor to the environment. Humanistic, the human as free agent seeking self-actualization. Cognitive, the human as thinker. Sociocultural, the human as social being embedded in a culture. Biological, the human animal. Major causal factors in behavior. Psychodynamic, unconscious motives, conflicts and defenses, early childhood experiences, and unresolved conflicts. Behavioral, past learning experiences, and the stimuli and behavioral consequences that exist in the current environment. Humanistic, free will, choice and inner drive toward self-actualization, search for a personal meaning of existence. Cognitive, thoughts, anticipations, planning, perceptions, attention, and memory processes. Social cultural perspective, social forces, including norms, social interactions, and group processes in one's culture and social environment. Biological, genetic and evolutionary factors, brain and biochemical processes. Predominant focus and methods of discovery. Psychodynamic. Intensive observations of personality processes in clinical settings. Some laboratory research. Behavioral study of learning processes in laboratory and real-world settings with an emphasis on precise observation of stimuli and responses. Humanistic study of meaning values and purpose in life, study of self-concept and its role in thought, emotion, and behavior. Cognitive, study of cognitive processes, usually under highly controlled laboratory conditions. Sociocultural, study of behavior and mental processes of people in different cultures, experiments, examining people's responses to social stimuli. Biological, study of brain behavior relations, role of hormones of biochemical factors in behavior, behavior genetics research. <laughs>